First of all, what you need to do is don't look at them as children because th these things that's coming back is very much more advanced. Um, so you have um, indigo, ch indigo children was from the, well, it was the light bringers from the early 50s on into the 70s. Mm -hmm. Then you had the indigo children, which was the 70s, uh, which was the 70s on into the 90s. And then you had the crystal children, which was from the 90s on into the 2000s, and now you're dealing with rainbow children. But the thing about these crystal children and these rainbow children is you can't treat them like adults. Um, um, you can't treat them like adults. Basically, you want to look at them for answers. Let me give you an example. My, my brother had his, had his little boy draw a fantasy five um, lottery number. That was a half a million dollars. And he drew it out, the little boy drew it out the best he could of the numbers he put on the paper. And as a result, um, he used to go and play those numbers, but he, from, from some, that, he got distracted and didn't go play the number that night. And when the Planet Five came on, it hit for a half a million dollars. Okay. And he cried. So my point here is that these children a lot of times are bringing answers. And so basically you want to de decode their mannerisms. Some, you walking somewhere or something, brother? Hello? I hear, uh, huh? That's not my yeah, I hear feedback or something. But anyway, um, you want to decode, you want to decode their mannerisms, their message, and their language, because they're coming to teach you something. Okay. They're, 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 they're coming to teach you something. Now, naturally, you can put them in an environment, um, in, a, in, a, in an environment that they um, are safe from um, outside influence. But just remember this also. One of the, the, the great channelers here, the sister Ty Seeley, had a, a crystal child um, in the 90s. And uh -huh. she said this. She said, I have to discipline him a little more than I would have to discipline some other ones for the simple fact. Because they have all this knowledge and this energy, that, that, um, that genius can also turn into psychotic um psychopaths yeah, so you yeah, have yeah. to monitor them you don't let them get away with a lot of things because the simple fact here is you got to harness that energy and a lot of people now um are scared of their children that you know they're, they're scared of their children they they uh they feel um they feel discipline in them you see are we still on yeah hello I'm here. Yeah. yeah they feel discipline in them a lot, of these, a lot of these people are scared of their own children, so what you have to do is the, those particular ones don't, the, uh, they, they have a lot of genius, but that genius, ha, genius has to be harnessed. So don't let them get away with a lot of things, because the simple fact, that can be a mass murderer in the future. It's, okay. a, dump, it's, a, it's a two edged sword when it comes to that. You have to, not only do you have to monitor them so that they can give you information, but you've got to keep a close watch on them. To the particular point here is that you have to discipline them. I'm not talking about abuse, but the thing about it here, don't think that what they do every time is so damn cute. No, I know. You, you got to be stern right. with them. You have to be stern with them and stuff because they are geniuses. And that will produce the genius in them. You see what I'm saying? They, uh, and all. Because a lot of, because believe it or not, a lot of, a lot, they're finding out now a lot of uh, people who, who a lot of um, um, children who parents let them just go wild, they resent the parents at the end for not disciplining them. No so doubt. that's so it's a double-edged sword. No doubt. Yes. I, I appreciate that, man. Uh, yes. You know, yeah, but um, so, so, so that's, that's what time it is. But my point here is don't think because they're in a little body that they don't have something to give you. Oh, you no, I'm, I'm a student. I'm learning, you know, my child is yeah. teaching me. Right, and it's just interesting here because Panic even got a channel that uh, um, whenever they draw on pieces of paper, when they do drawings on pieces of paper, those drawings are very powerful. They're very powerful talismans. So you can use child art as stuff for prosperity, stuff for protection. You, if you need protection, you need prosperity, you need some things, go get your children's art because they're bringing things from another dimension in here. Because they're innocent, and that's and those are talismans for healing, protection, and all of that. You can use child art and child craft. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, to, to to do things like that, no. Um, and what and, and their imagination when they have these outlandish imaginations, write those um things down. It's in that it's in that movie um bedtime story with Adam Sandler. 
he was he was creating a new reality, but he found out uh, the children what they said activated the uh, uh, the reality. So get that movie bedtime stories. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. All right. All right. All right, okay, Bobby. Well, I'm... Yes. Uh, All right, peace. Right. Thanks a lot, brother. Peace. Yeah. Yeah, brother Bobby, you uh mentioned the drawings, and I know when you um when when you when you come to the lectures, you uh come with a lot of the pictures uh, right. that you know people could uh, purchase. Yeah. Now, um, what what is this science? Because I heard a lot of you know there's a lot of criticism in the streets. Brothers just saying, oh, those are just pictures. He's selling pictures. What is the science behind Mandela's and like um, these these images? The Mandela's. Yeah. They're called Mandela's in Tibet. They're called Yantras in India, and these are nothing but matrix configuration of your own melanin. It's actual configurations of the uh, of, of of the DNA and the melanin complex in you. It's, it's configurations of your own soul. So these pictures are very powerful. I mean, I mean, um, a, a very, a very, a very powerful and stuff. You see, as a matter of fact, I mean, um, uh, um, these white folks don't have museums around the world, and museums packed with our stuff around the world. It was just pretty pictures. You see what I'm saying? The Egyptians understood the image, the the, the iconology, and the image and the power behind symbols. So these symbols of everything, they speak to our very nature and our soul, and they're for healing, prosperity, illumination, knowledge, and everything. You can deal with the actual symbols to do it. it why do you think the dollar bill is so powerful? Because it is steeped in symbology. Yes. yes. In, 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 in symbology. And I'm going to tell you, it's got some power behind it, because I, I used to be in the photorealism. So when I was in junior high school, I used to draw those dollar bills so good it would almost look counterfeit. But I was, and I was thinking, you know, why was I so transfixed on this dollar bill and on these, on, on, on usually the dollar, because I didn't have tens and twenties sitting around junior high school to draw. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, my point here is this currency, and ultimately I found out that I was drawn to the symbology on it, the Masonic symbology, which is Egyptian iconology. So a uh, picture's worth a thousand, a picture's worth a million words. Uh, it's, it's, worth a, it's worth a million words. And all uh, you see, um, we even had a pictorial language hieroglyphics to, to to bear witness to that. So you know what? So so you know, um, so that's how that whole thing go. But what I'm getting ready to do when I come there, I'm getting ready to put everybody on this because those angels came back, but they didn't come back. They came back with an angelic stimulus package, mm. and what that is is in the form of an angelic check. And you sign this check, sign your name, and everybody has a guardian angel. We'll give you the guardian angel to your birthday, and you sign it on that birthday, and baby, you put it in, you put that check up, and you can only sign $2,500, but it has an 8 in the corner as infinity, which means that the money will, $2,500 will come constantly. So we're going to bring that to New York and get everybody on this stimulus package. Just like they said, the physical world can have a stimulus package with a one-time deal. <laughs> you know, you get $1,000. The spirit world got a, got the same one, and these angelic hosts is providing with that with, 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 with that stimulus package, and we got it. We just we just um activated it and launched it in, in Baltimore last Sunday, um and last Sunday, and and so we'll we'll deal with that. So, um so be on the lookout for it. Um we coming with some prosperity and healing and everything else that works. We coming with prosperity because we need money right now. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know whenever I'm talking about some money, whenever I'm talking about some money, you know that it's, 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 it's some real serious times. You know, yeah. so we coming with, with this thing. But, you know, we'll, we'll explain. Yeah. Okay, now, yeah. Uh, whenever I have somebody on the show, I usually ask them, because um, people always ask me, well, let's get to the solutions. What are the solutions? Yeah. And different speakers say different things. Some brothers yeah. say the solution is economic. Some some brothers say the solution is um uh, we have to we have to arm ourselves. What do you think? Uh, because I know. Well, it, well the solution is not economic. Cause I'm gonna tell you something. Money in the hands of these deranged people out here ain't gonna do you nothing but the same old trials and tribulation. Guns in the hands of these things. Look, they done killed 37 children in Chicago. We we might the, the ideology of these guns and protection and all that's good. If you got a gun, you need it for protection. That's fine. And if, and, and if somebody busts in your house, that's one thing. But the reality of it is, is we don't shoot uh, the ruling class. 
we shoot our own. Mm-hmm. You see, we shoot, we shoot, we shoot our own, and we are programming from ba- and, and based on when they cut on that dog on. And I think the thing that's in Chicago is happening. They done killed thirty-seven children since January in Chicago. They done killed over hundred in the last year. But what's happening in, in Chicago is a precursor of what's gonna happen when they shut that cable on, and when, when they shut that cable on that digital thing on and send them signals to kill people. So a lot of times we don't understand the technology. You you saying you getting these guns. When they cut that cable on, they can signal and stuff to turn around and blow your own brains out and stuff like that. So you got so my point here is um my point here is is we need to deal with our technology. And our technology is spiritual. And we haven't mastered that yet. You see what I'm saying? And if we master that particular spiritual you won't even need no guns. They got a tribe down in Africa. They rub this stuff on them, and they shoot bullets on them. They shoot, they, they shoot bullets at them. They, shoot, they, get, they take knives and try to chop their hands off and nothing. And there's a forest field around him, and the knives and nothing can even touch him. We need to be getting into some stuff like that because that's our, that's our technology. You see what I'm saying? Instead of somebody else's technology who's mastered that technology. We need to get with our technology. So now we've had a research of uh, 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 several possibilities come back, and we need to utilize that. Uh, we, we, we need to utilize that because, be honest with you, we don't love each other to walk around with no guns. We're not going to protect each other from no guns. We're going to kill each other. You see, we have an we have a innate hatred of each other bred in us with years of squalor. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Yeah. So my point here is, let's be realistic about that. Yeah, you can say that and all, but I'm really honest with you. We don't even treat each other on a humane level each day to trust ourselves and say we're gonna have each other back in some welfare. That's bull. You see what I'm saying? It's bull. It does us a world of good, and it and it gives us actually a pleasure to kill each other. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So no. Nah. So my point here is is. The solutions is what we're doing. We're giving the solutions right now. Ongoing information into this knowledge and all. Because without a blueprint, you can't do jack shit. You see what I'm saying? You see, now, now, now my point here is if another person got a solution, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that my way is the only way. I'm not saying that. But my point here is we don't need to level other people's um, insight just for the simple fact that you think that your insight is the only way. Your, your, your way of thought might change based on you getting another level of knowledge. Right. Get, getting, right. A, getting another level of knowledge. But right now, the bullets that is going, the bullets that we're shooting, we're shooting into other black people. You see, we're not shooting those in no other race but our own. So, you know what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, this journey into uh, consciousness that I have undergone, is it's been a real humbling experience because I'm going to tell you, um, you know, when I first started out, you know, uh, the first place I turned was the church. So I turned to the church, right. and the first thing I did was judge everybody who wasn't a Christian. Ah, oh, this right. nigga's stupid, man, this nigga, this and that. So mm-hmm. then when I got into consciousness, I started listening to conspiracy. So then I started judging people, whoever wasn't into the conspiracy movement. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this nigga dumb. So now that I'm becoming more spiritual with the information, I understand that it's a bigger picture behind right. the conspiracy. So it's like each level I reach, I realize that, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an eternal journey. So I'm never exactly. going to have all the answers. So there's no need in judging people and saying, ah, oh, this exactly. person is wrong, that person it's just is wrong. wrong. Yeah. Because if you stay humble, you allow yourself to, to have the opportunity to grow. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? To have your opportunity to grow. See, humility was not necessarily bowing down to God or bowing down to other folks. It was to bow down to your own self so that your ego can get out of the way and your soul can take over and give you the right path. Uh, give, give, give you the right path. So you're right. The judging is nothing but an inflation of the ego. So you right back where you started from. Just the ego just put a trick on you and went through the same knowledge that you acquired and to keep you down mm-hmm. by you utilizing it the wrong way by judging. Mm-hmm. You see, so that's, exact, that's exactly what it is. And it'll all come to you. Um, find some time to just basically, sometimes you just got to leave everything behind and now, become now, that well, kid well, again. 
Well, why is it that, because, uh, you know, I, 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 you would figure knowledge is supposed to make you 